Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Another video today on improving your trophy shots. This is part two. Before we start off, let me say thank you so much to everybody that viewed that first uh, that first part. I had some really good feedback on that. I had some lovely messages come through that people really enjoyed it. A lot of people said it was helpful, which is fantastic because that's exactly what I want to get from this series. People seemed to enjoy it and they sent me positive messages and it had some um, good feedback on YouTube and on Facebook. And I think it got viewed 110 times or 120 times, which is nothing in the big scheme of social media. But for me, it's huge. It's one of my first videos and I'm sort of thinking it to myself now. I said in a message yesterday, you know, if you put 100 people in a room, there's a lot of people, you know. So all for all them people to watch the video, to like it and enjoy it. I hope all, all you did enjoy it. Then I'm, then I'm really appreciate it. And, uh, and thanks for all the positive messages. So we're going to carry on. I've got the motivation to carry on. <laughs> going to move on to video two. And this one is going to still be on composition. I'm also, while I'm here, I'm obviously by the bank, as you can see by the bivvy. We're going to move on to, I'm going to film part two and three while I'm here. Part three is something that I'm sure you'll be up for, which is improving your self-takes and the actual settings of the camera, how you do it, how you take the shots. The most messages I've had have been on Really enjoyed the video. Are you going to do self takes? Really enjoyed the video. Can you help me take better night shots? That sort of thing. So yeah, we're going to definitely do some work on night shots. So if that does sound good to you and you really uh, you really want to find out them bits about self takes and night shots, make sure you subscribe or follow or like or depending on whatever platform you're watching this on, and uh, you'll get notified when that video does come out. Okay, so I was hoping we could get finished before the light dropped, but it's uh, it's not the case. The light has. Uh, beaten us and we're gonna to have to carry on filming tomorrow so we'll call it a day for now and we'll reconvene tomorrow with hopefully some better lights if not me hiding under the bv with the rain but we'll see how we go so see you tomorrow and it's sunny get in um yeah but i'm getting a bit of bad light here because it's a bit dappled so i'm gonna um i'm gonna move over different spot one second how's that is that better so it's still not great is it I think we're just gonna have to live with it. I, there's trees everywhere, and I just can't get any um, dappled light. Hopefully that's all right. Hopefully you're not too um, too worried about that. Um, so where were we yesterday? We were talking about um, rule of thirds. Where to put yourself in the frame, weren't we? We were talking about rule of thirds, symmetry, um, above and below, and um, and uh, various bits like that. So let's go over it. Let's just consolidate everything and talk about it just one more time. Warm the old coffee up, and let's start with the rule of thirds, shall we? So. Actually, they want. So, rule of thirds: you normally stick yourself off to one side of the frame, either left or right. So you'll see it a lot in um, you'll see it in pictures. You don't necessarily have to use it on people. The rule of thirds: you can use it on items and and um, products, and you know your rig shots. You can use it in your your rod shots, for instance, as a common one. Don't always put your rods right in the middle. Stick them off to one side. Throw them off to the right hand side of the frame or the left hand side of the frame and have your rods pointing into the shot. One place you'll always see the rule of thirds, and you'll see it, well, I'll say always, you'll see it an awful lot, in, and you'll see symmetry as well, which we'll move on to next, is in um, newscasting. They use it in newscasting an awful lot. So they'll bring the person into the centre of the frame. Yesterday we found out some news that all politicians are in fact corrupt. They'll be very serious and they'll talk into the centre of the frame. So in South London today they caught a cat on a roof and it was an impressive feat by this fireman. And when they're talking about something relaxed and chilled out, they'll bring it here and they'll normally shove a graphic off to one side or something. So this is slightly more relaxed. Serious. Just to also give you one more little tip and one little rule of photography, wherever you're looking into the frame, you want to be on the opposite side. For instance, if I was looking like that in an image, you wouldn't want to be on that side of the frame because you're looking out of the frame and you're too close to this edge. It's not good. And if you were looking that way, you wouldn't want to be on this side because you're too close to the edge of the frame. Now, this is a rule and it's, like I said yesterday, follow it to start, follow it to, um, you know, to start with. And then once you're more experienced in photography and you know what you're doing, then you can break them. But as a general rule, if you're looking that way, don't be on this side of the frame, be on that side of the frame. And if you're looking that way, be on that side of the frame, because then you're looking into the frame. So how can you use that in your carp fishing? So it's it's easy and it's true. I just saw an owl. I've been trying to find an owl here forever. One minute, I'm just, oh, one minute. I've got to go and see if I can see it. <laughs> I'm shaking. I've been fishing here about two years. Uh, no, a year and a half. Not quite a year and a half. And the governor of this lake 
he's like me he's bang into his nature as well as he's um as well as his angling and he's a he's an all-rounder so all around the lake we've got owl boxes and we've got bat boxes and we've got loads of different things to try and encourage nature to um to come and visit and stay and i've walked through the kind of tunnels of the trees and i've heard owls take off it's unmistakable it sounds like a god knows what going over your head and um i've heard them take off from above my head but i've never seen one and I've been trying to see one and I always thought it would be nighttime when I saw one and I just saw one just fly down the, the channel just down there his wingspan was huge oh that's mental I can't believe that sorry um, um what were we talking about oh the lights just got better um I'm sorry I think I was talking about newscasters rule of thirds let me look it back and see where I was I'm sorry that's mega <laughs> so I just look back at that video <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that such a stupid face. That's mega. Anyway, right, I just watched it back. I know where I am now. So carp fishing, where can you, how can you use a rule of thirds in your carp fishing? It's not something you would do with as, uh, how can I put it? So when you're in the centre of the frame, let's talk about symmetry first of all. So with symmetry, you would put yourself in the centre of the frame. And I'm sorry, I've got to remember to talk to the lens. It's very difficult because I'm shooting on the face front in so I can make myself, so I can see where I'm framed. But it's, when you've got someone there, you, see, you, you talk to yourself, it's weird. People don't want to talk about it if they shoot. I've um, got to remember to talk to the lens. So um, when you're doing carp fishing shots, you will have yourself in the centre of the frame like this and you'll hold your fish like that and you'll have yourself, so it's symmetrical. So your head's here, your knees and feet would be here or the mat or whatever would be here and then the fish would be coming through the central part of the frame. So that's symmetry. I don't need to go into that. You all know what symmetry is. So that's it. It's very simple. That's the most common way of shooting. Now you can do the rule of thirds with a fish, but you would keep the fish in the central part of the frame and you would use the person off to one side. I use it an awful lot myself because I much prefer uh, trophy shots are a little bit interesting you know that the classic one of you yourself in the middle of the frame holding the fish is fine but it's just seen all over the place isn't it very common um, image and I like to make images that are you know just slightly different and interesting and the way you can make carp fishing trophy shots interesting is using the rule of thirds so one point to say here before I carry on is you make sure you do it when it's safe to do it and that you've got a good hold of the fish because you're putting the fish in a slightly not more dangerous position if you're if you're confident and you know what you're doing but if you're not very good with handling fish don't do this okay but if you're confident with handling fish it's a it's a it's a nice um it's a nice uh placid fish and it's not playing up or whatever and you think you can do this then great um and you can still control it in this position it's just it takes a more skilled and a more experienced angler to do it so what you would do is you would put yourself off to one side of the frame and hold the fish like that so what you would normally do, either sit off to one side and hold the fish like this, and I'll bring up some example shots up on the um, up on the screen here, so you can see. So you would either hold, put yourself on that side and hold the fish like that. You would go on this side and hold the fish like that. Or if you want a very easy way to do it and a very um, safe way of doing it, yeah, do it standing up. So you set yourself up on this side of the frame. So you would frame yourself up like this, and then you'll see my knee. I'll just cut my head off here you'll see my knee there so then my knee is on the line of the third of the frame my head is on that line and then you would pick the fish up and you would have the head of the fish here and the rest of the fish going across and you would hold the you would put your um, left arm on your knee and hold the fish hold the um where the pectorals are so you've got hold of the pectorals with that hand you would hold the pectorals there and then you would hold the tail of the fish there it's good for long fish and you would position yourself here and um and that's how you would hold the fish and then it would be a bit more interesting than just being in the center of the frame so you can see here i'm mostly on this side of the frame but the fish is going through the center and i'll show you a couple of example shots hopefully i've um i've got some i lost a big pile of images recently um <clears throat> of uh, my trophy shots over the years when I moved house but um I should have some digital images somewhere of me holding a fish like that and you can see an example shot so that's where you can use the rule of thirds in your um in your carp fishing photography let's just talk about the very last bit above and below the frame so there is not a single 
time I can think of where you would ever want to be above or below the frame with regards to looking at the fish. Um, you just want to be on eye line. No matter where you position yourself in the frame, you always just want to be on the eye line of the fish. So it's very simple. So just put the eye line of the fish to match the eye line of the camera. So as long as the, the, the height of the lens, whatever you're using, whether it's a lens, DSLR, or if it's a, it's a phone, always make sure the, the height of the uh, camera matches where you're going to hold the fish. As long as you do that, that's fine. Let's just talk about slightly cropping as well. And I've seen some stupid um, stuff about cropping over the years, where you can crop images and where you can't, and people that refuse to crop images and all stuff like that. It's a sort of nonsense as far as I'm concerned. You crop an image, however you want to crop an image. But when, when we're talking about rules and what I would advise, I heard a rule that you should never crop off people's, you know, you never want to crop off the top of people's head and stuff like that. It's a load of old crap. Don't listen to that. Um, if you want to chop off the top of someone's head in an image, that's absolutely fine. You wouldn't want to do it too close. You wouldn't want to frame them like that because that's, yeah, that's not a great image. But if, like you're seeing a lot of my shots, so I can bring in my eye line to you. I, I, I often chop off the top of my head. It's bald anyway. You don't need to see it. So I, <laughs> so I always frame myself, often frame myself often frame myself like this and when I'm shooting uh, corporate headshots and cor corporate portraits and things like that um, I often shoot like this and I'll, and I'll shoot a subject like this in the frame but it'll be portrait and I'll chop the top of the head off and just have the have the crop somewhere like mid forehead um, and that's a very very common technique in portraits and there's no it, there's no reason why you can't use that in, in carp photography uh, carp fishing photography especially trophy shots or any fishing trophy shots when the rule kind of you want to that you want to follow when you're cropping it and especially when you're cropping at limbs is you want to do it with intention and by intention i mean you don't want to accidentally crop off something um so if you if you shot an image i don't know i'll, I'll tell you what a hand a hand's a good one so there you go you're so you're seeing shots like that if i cropped an image like that that's lazy cropping because I've chopped off my fingers. There's no excuse why I wouldn't frame it like that or tell my subject to bring the hand into, into the frame so you can see all of it. That's lazy cropping. So with regards to cropping on your carp fish and trophy shots, I would say it's absolutely fine to crop off the top of someone's head. I would say it's okay to crop at the knees. So if you're showing the shot on the bottom, anything around like the knee area is fine. Um, so you could show the knees in the shot or you could just crop just slightly above the knees. If you were holding the fish up in the water, for instance, I would say get the fish as low to the water as possible, then you're cropping at the waist of yourself. So the fish would be kind of, if you imagine the water level there, I'd get the fish as close to the water level as possible and then have your head above it. And then you would also crop the forehead and that'll get a lovely image of just a, a close up image of the fish and you can see who's caught it behind it. So yeah, uh, uh, does that, did I say enough on cropping there? So yeah, so when you're, when you're on the bank, crop the top of the forehead and at the knees, don't crop any of the, uh, the arms or anything. You want to see all the arms and everything in the shot, and especially the hands holding the fish. Uh, you obviously don't want to crop anything on the fish at all whatsoever. You never crop anything off the fish, so you always have all the fish in shot. And water shots, crop, yeah, have the fish as low to the water as possible and um, have the, the sort of head at the top. I think that's everything. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It's probably going to be about a 10 or 15 minute video, but... um. It's, uh, it's relatively short in the big scheme of things. Um, drop us uh, some comments down below. Let us know how you're enjoying the, the first two videos, what you want to see in upcoming videos, and I will try my very best to include them. So thanks all. Hope you're all well. Stay safe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.